My name is Richard Thompson. My wife is organist at Pickens Presbyterian Church in Pickens, South Carolina. Pickens is one of the three mountain counties in South Carolina and has some of the most beautiful scenery in South Carolina due to its proximity to the Blue Ridge Mountains. In the early 1980s, the people in Pickens were seeking to replace an approximately 40-year-old pipe organ which they had. Uh, they wanted a pipe organ, but they were concerned about the cost. That led them to look for an electronic or electric organ. They were not totally satisfied with the sound that they got. So fortunately, they consulted an organ consultant in Charlotte, North Carolina, who made a fairly diligent search and eventually found for them a 1905 Henner's pipe organ. Now this organ which he located was in Lincoln, Nebraska at an organ company storage facility, some what called an airport storage hangar. Some of the people from Pickens went out and actually looked at the organ. This particular organ had been at the Emanuel Lutheran Church in Staplehurst, Nebraska for its entire life, which was approximately some 70 to 80 years. This particular church had merged with another congregation and therefore they no longer needed two organs. The 1905 Henners was the one that the combined churches decided to sell. The organist who eventually had been, stayed at Pickens for about uh, 40 years and another church member went out and looked at the organ, played it, and reported back to the congregation and they decided to purchase this organ in late 1984, early 1985, for the sum of $35,000. The church at that time had an electric organ, which of course was nowhere near the size of this organ. This organ weighs approximately 3,300 pounds, has almost 453 pipes. It was much larger than the organ which it replaced. As you can see, it, it is uh, sighted to the left of the pulpit in what used to be a small storage room. When the church in Pickens decided to purchase this organ, it was loaded onto a van, or maybe more than one van, and brought from Nebraska to Pickens. Part of the route that the organ took was actually through the mountains, and it arrived here. The congregation took a great um, ownership and, and interest in this organ. In fact, the congregation in Pickens has a very good pictorial history of the purchase and actual installation of the organ. In fact, the members were actually responsible for bringing the organ into the church. The people at the organ factory had the pews here marked where certain things should be placed, and they guided the members into actually bringing the different pipes and other components of the organ into the church and placing them where it could later be assembled. Now this organ, which you will hear shortly, uh, is a little bit unusual from most pipe organs which you might see today, and you will hear more about this later, but basically it has one keyboard, and the keyboard is split. Some of the stops control the upper half of the treble part of the keyboard, the other stops control the bass part of the keyboard, and then of course there, there are stops that control the uh, pedals. It is contained in a most beautiful golden oak cabinet, and is Previously mentioned, I think, this cabinet and whole organ weighs approximately 3,300 pounds. When the people decided that they wanted a pipe organ instead of an electric organ, they said, one of the reasons was, they said was because an electric organ you can hear, but a pipe organ you can feel. I have been to services here on several occasions, and you certainly can feel the organ in the church when it plays. People in this congregation sing very well, and you can tell if you ever come here for a service that they have great ownership in this instrument, and they sing very well to it. Um, you'll hear more about the organ later, uh, by word and also by music, but if you get the opportunity to come to Pickens, this is something that you definitely should see because it's definitely worth the trip here. Thank you. My name is Steve Grant, and I really enjoy doing these videos with David. This is a very unique organ in our area. Um, John Henner's built 2,000 pipe organs, and I, I'm not quite sure if I know where another one is. Uh, Pickens Presbyterian is very fortunate to have this organ in their church. Um, the most interesting thing about this organ is that it's a tracker pipe organ, and if what that means is if you can think of a similar comparison of a ma manual typewriter, like an old Royal or an Underwood typewriter, your, keys, your, your fingers touch the keys, and then a set of levers make the um, 
imprint hit the paper with the ink. And uh, so you have this tactile connection to the instrument. And that's exactly what happens on this organ. Uh, when this organ was built, electricity was not available in homes. So, you know, they didn't realize that it wasn't electric. They just knew that it was an organ and it was a tracker organ. There are two mechanical parts of the organ, the key mechanism and then the stop mechanism. So when you pull this uh, stop knob out, you can hear the um, wind begin to enter into the pipe. And the other interesting thing that Richard mentioned a few minutes ago is that the organ has a divided keyboard. Um, there are seven sets of stops on the organ, but they have a left and a right section, or they call it bass and treble. So if I draw the gamba treble, it goes down to middle C, then it stops. If you want it to play in the bass, then you have to draw the bass. So the purpose of this would be that you could have a stop in the right-hand part of the keyboard under expression and have a bass principle. Or you could reverse that and put the gamba in the bass and have the principle in the treble. So it sort of allows you to uh, make a one manual organ into a two manual organ. And um, a while ago when I uh, pulled the stop out and it was just a little bit flat and the pitch came up, you can do that to two stops. And uh, here's the tuning come in. So that's in the organ, what, that's what we call a Celeste. So the piece that I'm going to play for you today is um, a piece by Louis Vierne. He has a collection of pieces called 24 Pieces in Free Style. And right under the title here, you can see for organ or harmonium. And a harmonium is basically what we know today as a reed organ or a pump organ. So these pieces were written for a really wide variety of keyboard organ instruments. And all of the pedal parts that are written in here are optional. So I'm going to play the piece called Bersus, which is the French word for lullaby. The interesting thing about Louis Vierne is that he was born with cataracts. And um, as he grew older, one of his best friends was Marcel Dupre. And uh, Louis Vierne became the uh, organist in title at Notre Dame in Paris. He held that position for 36 years. And in some articles, uh, Marcel Dupre said that Louis Vierne would write or compose his music on extremely large staff paper with an extremely large pencil. And this piece is de de dedicated to his daughter, Colette. This is the Louis Vierne Bersus from 24 Pieces in Free Style. Joyce Thompson is the organist here, and she's going to play some pieces for us. Thank you very much. My name is Joyce Thompson. I'm delighted to be the organist at Pickens Presbyterian Church. After being many other places, this just feels like home right now, and hopefully for many years to come. Um, one thing when they, I want to piggyback on what Richard and Steve were saying, that um, when they went to get the organ in Nebraska, two things stood out to me since I'm of Lutheran origin. Um, it was neat that it came from a Lutheran church. And it was neat that I was reading in here that it was 20 degrees below zero when they went. And even with that, when she, her fingers were cold, Donna, who had been here 40 years total um, later on, um, her fingers were so cold, but she still loved playing it at that time. 
and the pedals weren't even hooked up, of course. So it's really neat that it was in an airplane hangar, and the whole history of it's fascinating. So, um, and the fact that it has one manual is kind of um, hard sometimes, but you have to um, adjust it with the different things that Steve was talking about. So I'd like to show you that on the organ. Um, sometimes I'll be playing up higher um, to make the solo come out, and then other times I'll be pulling out the diapason, which is the one that's in front, and the octave is in the front. They can be very loud. And when I pull those out, you should be able to hear the melody better, since we don't have separate like trumpets, chimes, um, oboes and clarinets, and that kind of thing. You have to be creative with how you do it. And, it, um, and we don't use the bellows anymore, because that was when it was not um, electronic, like they were saying. But it does have a tremolo, which I also don't use much, because it's kind of, kind of too <laughs> So I hope you enjoy what I'll be playing. Um, the first one is, since it's just gotten out of Christmas, and, epif and it's still Epiphany in some churches, uh, so watched, I'm going to play you selections of Epiphany music. And some would say this was Abner. This is Lohar Rose there blooming. I usually have it already set up, so I'm not used to it. This is Puer Nobis um, Variations by Michael Burkhart. I'm only going to play about four, three or four. Hello, David Kaiser here. I wanted to go through some of the stops of this pipe organ for you and explain very briefly about some of the mechanics. Now, speaking of Joyce, who was kind enough to play so much music for us, about the tuning, and it has drastically changed since we started recording because we had to cut down on the heating and also the dehumidifier so the microphones wouldn't be full of noise but it, it seems to have been affected greatly at that point. Um, so it sounded good in the beginning of the video and has since changed quite a bit. It's getting cold in here, and we all said it. Now, we have a single pedal stop. The other bass stops you can couple down to the pedal. So this is the pedal Bordone, it's at 16 foot. Of 
course you have a pedal coupler so we can Principles. Now you heard about the split keyboard technique on this instrument, and I will show some of those, not in the bass, but the treble versions. So here's the principle, the diapason in the treble. It's at four foot. Here it is at eight foot. Here's the eight and four together. There is an octave coupler, I can add that to the ensemble as well. And you actually get quite a bit of volume that way, if you're even playing pedal. Here's the gedeckt in the treble. Here's the gamba and pedal and the treble. Here's the solitionale and the treble. And we have a four foot flute also in the treble. We also have a tremulant on this organ. So here's the tremulant. It beats quite fast, and maybe you can hear it. Now pair it with the gedeckt. It's a very interesting sound. Also, there's a stop called bellow signal, which we have no need for anymore because we have electricity, but it used to be someone would sit in the back during service and would pump air into the organ um, when the organ is called on it by pulling this stop out. Um, we're not really sure exactly how it's showing that. There may even be a flag or something back there. Um, so those are all the stops of this instrument. I should mention there is a a swell box, and it's a lever that you move with your foot down here. Um, if you get good at this, you can master any swell box. There are also, also two um, pistons of sorts for the stops. There are these levers also here at your feet. And basically, they're on off. So here's the full ensemble. Um, let's see. A, a mezzo piano sound as well, the other one. So hopefully you, you enjoyed this historic instrument at uh, Pagan's Presbyterian Church, and thank you for watching.